future me here. So it actually took two tries to try and make this video. The first one was just absolutely terrible because my energy was just all bad and it wasn't really exciting at all. And on the second time, the audio is just completely terrible. So I ended up having to use the backup audio, which is not very good in this kind of space. And that's what you have to see here. So my apologies, everyone. Uh, I gave it my best and I still failed. So. Uh, enjoy the video if you can, and uh, headphone users, just don't even bother watching. For everyone else, see ya. Today we're going to be building a dedicated gaming server using Unraid and some old parts I have laying around the lab. Uh, basically for, you know, all my friends to play on. So it's not going to be anything special because it's just all used equipment. So we're really just grabbing whatever's available um, around the lab. Unfortunately, I think I have enough parts to do an entire build, and it's not gonna be anything like too crazy. Because we're just gonna be hosting, you know, a couple of servers like Valheim, Project Zomboid, and hopefully Space Engineers. I'm a little worried about Space Engineers because it is it uses all the resources. Like literally as much as you give it, it'll use, and it's very it's coded very poorly, at least it used to be. But I'd like to get back into that to see how it goes. And I've mentioned this in the past, but never really got into it yet. And we're gonna be using a 3700X for this build. Um, well, yeah, specifically for this build. And hopefully that will be enough horsepower to run those servers. I'm sure it will, but uh, I'm like, again, I'm worried about space in yours. All right, we gotta do some shopping for more parts. So uh, we have a CPU here. Ooh, oh, wow, just making a big old mess, why don't you? Uh, we need, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, well we need a graphics card so we can do some troubleshooting in the event that something goes wrong. I'm gonna grab an extra uh, NIC. This will be for all the games to actually run out of and I'll talk more about that later. And we need a USB thumb, oh, here we go, USB thumb drive. So Unraid will live on this SanDisk thumb drive. And we need a heat sink, okay. I think this is the only one I had, A19. Yeah, I think this is the only one that's Ryzen compatible. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know if I, maybe I should use this Radeon Pro instead of this Quadro K420. No, I think the K420 would be fine. Uh, we're not, we're gonna skip over the Radeon one. Um, I think that's everything. Almost forgot the thermal paste. That would be important. All right. so. The whole reason why we're using a 3700X is mainly because it's what I have laying around. I would like to use something newer, but I really don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of new parts just to build a server that's dedicated to hosting several game servers. I could continue to use my uh, everyday drivers, my everyday driver, which is also a Ryzen 5800X, which has a lot more cores and has a lot more. Um, RAM and other, it's just got a lot more resources to it. But the problem is, is I use that for everything else and I'm kind of getting worried about exposing my server to the internet as much as I have been lately. And I'd like to have another computer on its own VLAN, on its own network as well that I can access anytime I want uh, and keep it separated from the rest of everything else. And I put way too much thermal goop on here, but I think that'll be all right. So Dynatron sent over this uh, heat sink forever ago. I used it on another build, but um, I ended up stopped using it. I don't remember why. I think it might have been too loud or something to that effect. Uh, but we're gonna use it again for this build because uh, I think I got my whole closet situation figured out where it's not overheating, which if you want to check out that video where I cool my server closet of adding event, I'll link in the video description as well as on top here. Um, I guess we're going to pull cool air through this. So we're going to face this the opposite way since we'll still be facing up. This is going to be weird. Normally you push air through these things, but I'm going to pull air through it. Actually, I'm not going to do that because it's going to collect a lot of dust. You know what, screw it, it'll be fine. No, 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 we're gonna flip it back the other way. Oh gosh, getting thermal paste everywhere. Uh, so let's get this tied down. 
So this is a real blowy Matron on this thing. It's gonna be super loud. Uh, but, you know, again, it's gonna be in the closet. I don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal or too much of a nuance. Although I did remove it last time, so we'll see how long this lasts. Maybe I'll pick up a stock cooler in the future, uh, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now for storage, I have two hard drives somewhere. I have no idea where they are at the moment, but I'm gonna be using two hard drives or just laptop hard drives. They are 256 or 512 gigabytes each, not really sure. So I'm just gonna do a very small array because it doesn't really matter. Because again, this is just gonna be hosting games and nothing else. But for uh, our cache pool, we're gonna be using an NVMe drive. Uh, this is pretty quick. Uh, it's one terabyte, so that's gonna be pretty cool to have. It's uh, just a generic Toshiba PCI 3 Gen 4. And then our RAM is also nothing special either. It's just some uh, crucial memory that's eight gigs each. And I don't even know what the speeds are on this 2,666 megahertz. Nothing fancy. In its current state, we're only gonna have a total of 32 gigs of RAM. Not a whole lot, but I think it should be more than enough because game servers typically don't use a lot of RAM. The only exception here being that space engineers will probably use pretty much about as much as I can give it, or at least that's what I suspect anyway. Uh, but we'll see what happens in the end. I'm not too, too worried about this build as a whole. I think it's gonna have really good specs especially considering what it is. And these are just parts I have laying around now, thanks to people that have donated some parts, uh, as well as just, you know, stuff that I've collected over the years. All right, but it wouldn't be a server without a chassis. So we need to go get one somewhere. I don't really know where any of my chassis are anymore. So this is the Rosewill Rose RSV 5400, wait, 4500 UL or something like that. This was a, a newer chassis that Rosewell tried to come out with that was supposed to replace the classic 15 bay Rosewell uh, 45, L4500. Uh, but this one kind of suffered from a serious flaw. And as far as I know, you can't even buy this anymore from Rosewell. So this one has a flat face instead of the curved one. And the mistake that they m made with this particular one is you can't actually fit um, three and a quarter inch drives or whatever, regular hard drives inside of these bays because they are so close to each other that the rubber grommets between the actual um, sleds will prevent you from sliding your hard drives in and out. So mistake addition, kind of like Windows ME, not a big deal. And I think they pulled it entirely and they've started re-releasing the ever loved L4500 server chassis. But for us, because we don't care about storage, this server chassis chassis should be perfect uh, hopefully we don't have any problems with it i don't think we will but it's kind of cool because it has usb 3.0 which is nice but just a replacement before we move along too far got my one of my special uh frames up there whatever this is the luck one i have like six other ones or however how many letters are in special anyway there's an absolute mess of cables in here it's just absolutely insane but i think that <laughs> I think we might clean these up, but I'm not sure. So I've done a build in here before, and I did make a video about this if you're curious, uh, which I will also leave in the video description below or just above to my top left. Uh, but, you know, honestly, we're pretty much done with this build. There's not really much else to it. The only things that there's really left to talk about are um, the configuration settings with inside of Unraid or, you know, what the network is going to look like um, that I actually set up inside of Unraid because that's going to be the more complex part and also the networking part. But I promise I will make a video on how to do that at some point in the future. Not really sure when. I just need to figure all of that out on my own first before I try and teach you guys how to fish, as they say. Uh, but I think it'd be pretty cool in the end when I get this thing all set up. Um, so that way, you know, it'll be on its essentially on its own network. And of course, we're going to be using Unraid because that is what I'm most familiar with. Although I should take this opportunity and try out TrueNAS. I know that the TrueNAS guys have been kind of watching the channel on and off over the years. And I think they're dying for me to finally make the switch uh, to that. But we'll see what happens. All right, guys. Well, there really isn't much else to really say in this video. I'm pretty excited to get this thing up and running. So that is what I'm going to be doing. All the boring stuff, as they say. And uh, there will be more to come on this particular build in the future, as I've mentioned before. And as always, I just want to thank each and every one of 
each and every one of you uh, for watching the channel because it has really helped out uh, for me to continue to grow the channel so that way I can you know do my hobby this is my hobby is building computers and setting up servers and just really having fun so I really do appreciate all of you um, watching as usual so I will see all of you next time and enjoy the rest of your day weekend night or whatever it may be cheers <laughs>